Good morning. I'm Robert Dean, and it's time for our prayer time for June the 27th. Let's open our time with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the opportunity that we have to pray. And we thank you that, Lord, we are going to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ as we look at these different scriptures, Lord, that going to in uh, challenge us, but also as well, Lord, bring us closer to you. We ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I love the scriptures, and I love praying the scriptures, and today we're going to be doing different scriptures. Now, listen to this. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. Jesus says this. This is the Sermon on the Mount, and he says, Ask, and it'll be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it will be opened unto you. For every Everyone who asks, he will receive, and he who seeks, find, and to him who knocks, it'll be open unto you. So, Father, today, I thank you for the opportunity of being able to pray. And, Lord, this is a fantastic promise. Just the fact that we are able to, first of all, ask. I love the fact that it says in James 4, 2, you have not because you ask not. So, Lord, what are some of the things that we're asking for today? Well, first of all, we're asking that, Lord, this would be the time that our wonderful touch of God would be upon, first of all, ourselves. In this moment, Lord, we want to draw close to you. Many times we see in scriptures, and also as well for us, for us who believe in the uh, personal chatting with the Lord in the area of prophecy, tongues, or interpretation, or direct impression, or through the many other means that, Lord, you bring to us, Lord, this simple message. Draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. Lord, that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to draw near to you because, Lord, we recognize that, well, first of all, that you love us, but secondly, through Jesus Christ, we have an incredible avenue of prayer. Imagine, Lord, this, that you can do exceedingly, abundantly beyond what we're able to ask or even imagine. Now, here is Paul reminding us that there is a God in heaven. There is a God who created everything and everyone who wants to do exceedingly, abundantly beyond what we're able to ask or even imagine. Lord, thank you for that today. Thank you for the fact that, Lord, today, when we ask, it's going to be given to us. Marvelous, marvelous promise, Lord. You even said you'll give us the desires of our heart. Now, Lord, we recognize the desires of our heart are going to, as we seek your face, of course, as it says in Matthew 6, 33, our desires are going to become your desires. Our wants are going to become your wants, and our needs are going to be your needs. Because the simple fact is that, Lord, we are aligning ourselves up to the plans and purposes of God. We are saying to you, Lord, my destiny is in your hands. I want to do your will today. You know, that one characteristic of our Savior was this, that, Lord, he wanted to do the will of the Father. And I pray today that that will be our desire, our aim, our goal, that, Lord, we will want to do what you want us to do wherever we go, wherever we find ourselves today, Lord, whoever we meet, Lord, Help us to be a blessing and help us, Lord, to do your will. Father, last Friday I had, for example, I should say Saturday, I had an example where a fella came up to me. I was filling my motorcycle with gas and he came to me and he said, sir, could you give me some money so I can go get some food? And I remember standing there for a moment and saying, well, I don't have any money. And so I filled up the tank with gas and was getting ready to draw, drive away. And 
I all of a sudden, you know, and I in fact did drive away, but the Holy Spirit stopped me and told me, he says, no, you need to turn around because you, uh, he reminded me that uh, the simple fact is that, Lord, when someone asks for help, it could be Jesus in distressing disguise. So I went around the corner and I drove up to him and I said, listen, I don't have any money on me, but if you go into that convenience store and if you want to buy food, I will pay for it. And he looked at me and in that moment, I discovered really what he wanted from me. And that was he wanted money, but not to go to the Safeway, but to go and buy booze. Well, it was the fact that, you know, I avoid, I, um, obeyed the voice of God by going and saying to him, listen, I'll buy you food, no problem at all. He didn't want that uh, element. He says, no, no, I'll, 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 I'll get money from somebody else. And, and, and it was in that moment that I realized his motivation for asking money, but my motivation was to help him. Lord, Help us today to recognize those that are in your, who you bring into our world, the, who are distressing disguise, who need that really help, and also as well, Lord, we know that there are folks out there who are looking for other motivation, but the reality of the situation is that, Lord, we need to be there to help others. Now, Father, that's what prayer is all about intercession and being a prayer warrior on behalf of others is what we're called to do. And that's why we come to you, Lord. We come to you because the simple fact is that, Lord, we have needs. But there are others that you will bring into our world that will have those needs as well. And we want to be there, Lord, to be a blessing. Lord, today we want to see, for example, Lord, our marriage is restored Many marriages, Lord, right now almost feel like war zones, and that's not how it should be. We need to remember a very important principle, and that principle is called first love. Now, Father, many marriages, of course, were based upon physical attraction and also as well, Lord, about how we felt about that person at the time. But Lord, we do know that marriage is more than, of course, physical attraction and also as well, how we feel about each other because feelings are only, uh, for example, a perception or a reflection of our perception of a situation or a person. There are times where we love someone and yet they can hurt us deeply by what they say, what they do, and what we perceive that they are doing to us. But Father, this is the moment that, Lord, we are going to ask you, Lord, to bring us back to first love. You know, it tells us in Revelation chapter 2, and it's a very powerful portion of Scripture, Jesus said to the church at Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2, he said this, Lord, he says, the one thing I have against you is you've forgotten your first love. You see, the reality was that in the busyness of life, the urgency of life, the pursuit of life, the cares and riches of this life, and all the things that go with just life in general, it is easy to lose perspective. It's easy to get caught up in the urgent and the crisis. It's easy to get caught up in day-to-day -day business. And Father, we can lose our perspective and even lose our first love. So Father, today in the name of Jesus, we want to come back to that place of first love. And we want to bring that, Lord, back into our uh, marriages. Lord, from time to time, I go back and I look at my wedding photos. They are actually <laughs> on my night desk. And I, I look at them from time to time. And I look at that beautiful woman that I married on that day. And I remember and all the different feelings that come back as I think about how that when she walked down the aisle, she took my breath away. And I remember the following morning after uh, we got married, and I looked across at the table at this beautiful blonde 
bombshell is the only way I can describe it. And I thought to myself, how is it that I got so fortunate to marry not just a beautiful woman, but a beautiful personality? This was a woman who loved the Lord with all her heart, soul, mind, and strength. And she decided to become my wife. She chose me. I chose her as well, but she chose me, and she chose to, to love me and to spend her life with me. She chose to take the future with me and to walk with me through whatever situation I and her were going to walk through. And I sat there on that, that, uh, that morning in that um, restaurant in Fort McLeod, and I thought, Lord, this is an incredible situation. I have a partner who's going to be walking with me. Now, of course, many decades later, every day when I drive her to work or and I look over and I'm thinking to myself, my goodness, how very fortunate I am. Lord, there are many people in the world who do not have a godly companion. They don't have someone to share their dreams, their aspirations. But more importantly, they don't have that faith. And Father, we want to pray today for those who do not have a partner who loves you and cares for you the way that we do. We're, we know that there are many out there. And so, Lord, today we're going to pray for unsaved spouses. Could be a man could be a woman, but we're praying for them today. Lord, over the years, I've had conversations with both men and women about this situation, about the fact that, Lord, they do not have a loving spouse that cares about the same things that they care about. They talk about, you know, the family. They talk about money. They talk about, you know, whatever is interest to their partner. But Lord, they can't go any deeper than that because the deepest and most powerful thing that we have is our relationship with God. And we know that they are not going to be spending eternity with us because they aren't heading the same direction. They haven't had the same eternal goal. And so, Father, today we're standing in the gap, especially for unsaved spouses. Now, we have a wonderful declaration that we're going to make today. In fact, Lord, we're going to make three powerful declarations today on this aspect. Number one, we're going to claim the promise of Acts 16.31 that says, not only are we going to be saved, but our household as well. Father, we are praying today for our spouse. We know that it tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that because of our salvation, they have special favor. You are looking at saving them. You want them to be saved. And so, Lord, Lord, we're claiming that promise. We know that right now there are forces that are keeping them from salvation. Lord, remember the story of a young man. And in fact, this young man had a very dynamic relationship with you. And he had a wonderful girl in his life. And he continued to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with her. And every time she would say to him, I am perfectly fine. I am happy the way that I am. And Lord, this relationship went on for several months. And she would go to church with him. And every Sunday morning, there would be a invitation and she would stand there and not do anything about it. And then finally, they went out for uh, for dinner after church on a Sunday morning. And he said, that was a pretty good message. And she said, yes, it was. He says, so what do you think about it? She said, well, it was fine. Um, I enjoyed what he had to say. Then he asked the question, what about Jesus Christ? At the end of the service, you had an opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ. And she said her standard answer, and that standard answer was this, I am perfectly fine with the way that I am. And in that moment, the young man had a realization. He had an epiphany. The epiphany was that he wasn't going to have this girl, and this girl didn't look like she was going to 
and this had been going on for months. He loved her dearly, but he knew that he could not spend the rest of his life with her based on the fact of his relationship with God. And it broke his heart that and in that dinner meeting, he said, honey, I want you to know something. I have a deep relationship with God, and I've been waiting for you to come to Jesus Christ. But you're not going to come, are you? She says, no, why should I? I'm perfectly fine the way I am. And in that moment, he looked at her, took her hand, and said, then we must end this relationship. And she looked at him and said, are you going to give me up for your religion? And he said, yes, I am. And he stood up and he walked away and she began to cry. And he turned back and he said, I am so sorry, but I have to do this. And he walked out of the restaurant and they met from time to time after that. But he would ask her, do you want to give your life to Jesus? And she said, no, I'm perfectly fine. My heart is broken, but I'm perfectly fine the way that I am. Even after he broke up, a couple of times he met with her and talked with her, but she was perfectly fine the way she was. Later on, of course, he did find a Christian girl and got married and, of course, uh, had a, a wonderful relationship with that girl. But you see, the reality of the situation is that he had tried for several months to get her saved. And he knew the Holy Spirit was working on her heart, but her heart was close to the things of the gospel. Father, we're not believing that for our spouses, though. We're believing that, Lord, today you are going to enable us, Lord. For whatever reason we got married, Lord, there are a lot of people who get saved. And then after they have, after they get married, and there's a tension that goes on in the home. But Father, we're believing today that, Lord, you can turn every situation around. Now, of course, I prayed that prayer for young people who are, Lord, currently saved and going with an unbelieving spouse, you or unbelieving girl or boyfriend. It is better for you to close off that relationship than pursue a relationship that will end up on the heartache. But for those who are serving the Lord and have an unbelieving spouse for whatever reason, I've known some who have had, who, who went into relationships together, got married, and both were believers. And then what happened was one of them walked away. Lord, that can happen. But Father, whatever the situation is, I pray with every fiber of my being, that, Lord, you are going to heal relationships. You are going to turn these relationships around. Lord, we know that no matter what state we find ourselves in, Lord, you can help us, and you can also give us wisdom. Now, Lord, secondly, another promise we're going to claim today is the promise of Proverbs 22, 6. Train a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they will not depart from it. Lord, that's a wonderful promise for parents uh, who right now, Lord, have children who are wayward. We've done everything we can to show them the faith. We've taught them the things of God, but Lord, they made their own decision to walk away from the greatest message and also the greatest relationship that anyone could ever have. The deepness of having a relationship with God, the privilege of having children serving the Lord. There's a lot of folks out there that, Lord, don't have that. But we have that promise again. And of course, Lord, we have the promise of Acts 16, 31, that not only shall we say, but our household as well. But Lord, we also have the promise that, Lord, our wayward children are going to come back. That's why we battle for them daily in prayer. We're like Job, who spent time every single day offering sacrifices, and praying for his children. He had seven boys and three girls, and every day he would spend time praying for each one. And Lord, in those days, it was a time-consuming process. He often probably got up early in the morning and did his prayer time for his children. Father, 
Today, we don't have to offer sacrifices. That sacrifice has been done by Jesus Christ on the cross when he allowed his body to be broken and his blood to be shed. But Lord, we still need to take some time and pray for our kids. We need to stand in the gap for them, especially when they are wayward. They're like the prodigal. But Father, our attitude has to be like the father who was looking for his wayward son. He was waiting for the opportunity to lavish on that boy love and forgiveness and acceptance. That didn't mean that he condoned what he did, but he chose instead to show no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I love how Jesus handled the woman caught in the act of adultery. When he stood up and said to her, neither do I condemn you, go and sin no more. Father, we know that our wayward children are doing things, living ways, saying things, acting in ways that, Lord, we are not happy about and we would not condone. But, Father, we know that there's a moment that they're going to be like the prodigal. They're going to come to themselves and they're going to come home. Father, in the name of Jesus, in that moment, we're going to receive them back and Lord, we're going to meet them where they are and we're going to help rebuild their lives because Lord, the simple fact is that's what we're called to do. And Father, that's the lesson of the prodigal and that's the lesson of the father. He knew what his son had done, but he was willing to meet him halfway. In fact, he went and found him. As soon as he came over the hill, the father went up to him, threw his arms around him, and immediately restored him. And that's what we're going to do, Lord. We're going to restore those members of our family who have come back to themselves and have come back to us and have come back to the Lord. We're going to believe that, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. Also as well, Lord, in this time and place of prayer. And Lord, it's hard to believe we've hardly even gone out of Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. But Lord, we're asking today and we're making a declaration concerning our family and our friends and that is that, Lord, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, we're reminded, of course, that it was Joshua who made that statement, Joshua 24, 15, where he had called the people together, and he says, look, you've got two choices here. He can say, or actually three choices. He says, number one, you can choose to go back to Egypt and live in that bondage, or you can take the gods of the Canaanites who will lead you back into bondage, but I want you to know Know this, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord because we're going to live in the freedom of the Lord. I love the fact that it says in John 8, um, it says, who the Son sets free is free indeed. And Lord, we shall know the truth and the truth will make us free. So Father, thank you today for the wonderful promise of the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ and the victory that we have in Jesus Christ. And that is where we're going to find ourselves today. So Lord, we're going to ask for the restoration of our marriages. We're going to ask for the restoration, Lord, of our children. We're going to ask that, Lord, divine intervention is going to come into our family and friends situation. Also, Lord, we're knocking on behalf of others today. Lord, we believe today for household salvation, but we also believe for revival. And we're asking for revival, Lord, not only in our families, but Lord, in our churches. We're praying today that our fellow pastors, Lord, when they have their times and places of prayer, that you're going to minister to them. And that, Lord, as we seek we're going to find. Matthew 6, says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things are going to be added unto us. Father, we're thankful today that all the things that we're looking for are going to be added to us and bring us to a place of victory and also a place of abundance. And Jesus said this, he said this, knock and it'll be door open unto you. I love how Jesus says in Revelation 3.20, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone opens the door, I will come and I will abide with him. Jesus gives us an invitation 
every single day of coming into his presence and abiding in him. And when we abide in him, he abides in us. And the beauty of all of this, Lord, is that we have this wonderful opportunity and avenue to do prayer, that we can actually ask you, Lord, to touch not just our own situation, but those that, Lord, we love and care about, those that come across our path today, and those that need your touch. Father, there are going to be people that will come to us today. Lord, just last week, uh, just actually yesterday, a, a, a couple of ladies came to me and uh, they were looking for a young lady. And they were dearly concerned because the simple fact she had disappeared. She was 13 years old and she had disappeared. And I said, may I pray for you? And I laid hands on them in front of my two biker buddies and I prayed for her. And they thanked me and they hugged me for that. And it was just the fact that they gave them for a moment a little peace that passes all understanding. Lord, we are praying today for that opportunity, Lord, to be taking that moment of prayer where we can touch people's lives. We can pray for them and we can believe God for their situation, whatever it is. There's a lot of desperate situations out there, a lot of people that need help. And the greatest blessing that we can actually do for them is to be able to pray for them. And Lord, we thank you for that today. Lord, thank you today for the wonderful promise of Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. Ask and it'll be given unto you Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door, it will be opened. For everyone who asks, receive. And he who seeks, find. And to him who knocks, the door shall be opened. Lord, thank you today for that. Thank you for these wonderful promises. And thank you, Lord, for the fact that, Lord, when we pray, you have already told us in Matt, uh, I should say in Daniel 9:23 and Daniel 10:12 that the answer is already on the way. Thank you for the answer. Thank you, Lord, that we can do this today and we can do it with confidence, we can do it with assurance, and we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My name is Robert Dean Steele. I hope that you've enjoyed our time of prayer today. If you like what you've heard, I do encourage you to press the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. God bless you and have yourself a great and godly day. And don't forget to pray.